Okay. Uh, <clears throat> welcome back. And uh, I'm going to say that I'm 100% 100 happy to see everybody with beautiful faces here today. We had a, you had a good exam on uh, number one. Um, and uh, there was actually somebody that aced it. And, uh, and there were a lot of other good grades. And since we were ahead of uh, schedule, we're still ahead of schedule as of today, um, I gave everybody the day off, which I sometimes do, you know, the lecture after, a, you know, end of the week after a midterm. So uh, I'll be giving you some more instruction uh, on some more feedback on exam one after I tear apart the Scantron reports and stuff. And we'll get that back to you. We'll give you some handouts and stuff uh, on that. But right now you can look at your, your two component constituent grades, exam one Scantron and exam one clicking, I believe, uh, on web courses. And those two add together for your final or for your total. Um, today's uh, Abraham Lincoln's birthday, February 12th. Um, here's one of his famous quotes. General Sheridan says, if the thing is pressed, I think that Lee will surrender. Let the thing be pressed, said Abraham Lincoln to General Grant. And, and if you look at this carefully, you'll see it was just eight days that he telegraphed uh, General Grant this way, uh, eight days before he was assassinated. Anyways, Abraham Lincoln, one of the great, great ones. Uh, SI scheduled today, 2.30, over in uh, Teaching Academy, 3.22. And uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, 3 to 3.50 p.m. And hopefully that'll be good. And tomorrow I have office hours. Um, I think they're uh, 11. Uh, wait a minute. So I got it back here. Uh, yeah, 11 a.m. to noon uh, on uh, Wednesday. And those are in room 158 in the Physical Sciences Building. So just... Uh, Come on over there, bring any question that you like, and, and then that's what we'll talk about. Uh, I always go to office hours and I bring work to do in case nobody shows up. But if you do show up, we'll, we'll talk about what you want to do, what you want to talk about. Okay, a few lectures ago, we talked about the impulse equation uh, based on Newton's second law. F delta T equals M delta V. Go ahead and jot that down. We're going to make, a, make use of that to introduce uh, a new uh, dynamical quantity uh, that Newton uh, used as his building block for just about everything. Um, and that quantity is what we now call momentum. It's uh, mv, the mass of an object times its velocity. It's a vector quantity, so you can put little arrows over the velocity part. And the customary symbol, I have no idea why they use lowercase p, but that's, you know, all over the Western world, that's what we use for the symbol for, uh, for momentum. And Newton called it the quantity of motion, and that's what really he was thinking about. You know, you can say that something is fast, but does it have a lot of motion? Does it have a lot of... And he, to his mind, uh, mv, the, the, quotient, the, the product of mass times velocity is the thing that counts in uh, interactions. And remember, uh, the impulse equation is a version of Newton's second law, F equals ma. It's just kind of rearranged a little bit. Uh, and uh, the impulse equation is all about momentum. Now, here's the other interesting thing. Uh, Albert Einstein constructed the four-dimensional version uh, of momentum. And, uh, and, it, and, and with that, he was able to effectively encode his entire theory of relativity symmetrically with regard to space and time. Uh, and here's the four-dimensional uh, version of momentum. He used energy uh, as the fourth dynamical quantity. Uh, and we will study energy as well. It's a very special physics uh, concept. And so, um, and then the other three parts of his four-dimensional vector 
uh, it, are, are the uh, spatial components of the uh, P equals MV momentum, P subscript X, P subscript Y, and P subscript Z. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, we're not going to get too much. We're not going to get too fancy. Uh, but we are going to try to be able to tackle, for instance, understanding this. You know, we've talked a lot about the skateboard interaction. And what is exchanged equally um, in the skateboard interaction, which is a, a simple model for all physical interactions in the universe, uh, is momentum. The thing that, you know, that Isaac Newton was thinking about, equal but opposite reaction, he was really thinking about exchange of momentum. Because the MV that one guy gets is equal to the MV that the other guy gets. And you can go back and uh, loop through uh, all of our uh, calculations uh, of, um, you know, with Bob and Carl and compute MV at each stage initially. Well, initially, MV is equal to zero. But afterwards, um, the MV of Carl and the MV of Bob are the same size except they're opposite directions. So you can go back and look at your notes about that. Now let's skip over this slide. Okay. Uh, so let's get down to the basics. Uh, the dynamical quantity impulse, that's F delta T. All right, in the impulse equation, sometimes you see it this way, F times T. That's really lazy. I, I try not to ever do that, but you sometimes see that. Um, this is my preferred a format F delta T equals delta P. Um, and it's the impulse F delta T, and that's the net force uh, that equals delta P, the change in the momentum. Uh, so delta P uh, is equal to the, imp the impulse. And we're going to work with some of that today and use it um, as a way of calculating a stopping time, for instance. And as a kind of a round the horn long way, a long cut, a way to calculate a stopping distance, which were uh, problems on uh, on exam uh, th exam one on the clicking area. And don't forget, this is just another version of F equals M A. All right. And so, um, and the definition of P yeah, we've already given it is P is equal to M V. And uh, we're mostly going to be working in one dimension, so I'm not going to put little arrows over the top. But I will denote direction in the customary way I have been doing so, and that is with um, right word being positive and left word being negatory. All right. So now, as I mentioned, the impulse equation and the concept of momentum give us an easy way of calculating a stopping time. And that was one, I what was the clicker question? Stopping time or stopping distance for the coin? Yeah, stopping acceleration was the regular part, and then the bonus part was stopping time. All right, let's do it. Let's get it out of the way. Let's square it away. And we'll use the impulse equation. And now, does that look like something familiar? Yeah, that's a homework problem. So guess what you guys are going to get? Some more homework problems like this. All right, so let's look at this problem. I'll, I'll spell it out for you. Given a coin of mass 0 0.05 kilograms sliding across a tabletop from left to Oh, that sounds a lot like the exam. Uh, at initial point X1, its speed is 1.7 meters per second. And it then experiences a frictional force. 0 0.020 newtons leftward. And we'll draw a diagram here in a second. All right. It slows down to a position X2 and, and slows down to a stop. And so the question is, what is the stopping time for this coin? Okay, so that's basically the brain burner from um, the bonus part of exam one. And uh, let's, let's try to work this out. Now, if you look at this carefully, the written part, uh, says you've got a mass, so we're going to calculate P1 and P2, the initial and the final uh, momenta. All right, so the momentum P1 at position X1 is going to be the mass times whatever the speed is, whatever the velocity is there. And do we have the velocity at position X1? 
Yeah, we got it. It's 1.7. Right, so we can get that one. And it comes to a stop at position X2. So um, what's the momentum at position X2? It comes to a stop. What do you think? Goose egg? See, I see somebody up in front going like this. Yeah, goose egg, zero. Because it stopped. Because the, the V part is zero. So the MV is equal to zero. All right. Now, we have the force for the impulse side of the impulse equation. You know, we, we we're trying to get F delta T equals delta P. All right. We got delta P. Well, we don't have it yet, but we're, we've got what we need to calculate it. And we've got the force. The only thing we don't have is the delta T. That's the stopping time. So we have the force, we have the delta P in a second, we will have it anyways. And so we can calculate the stopping time delta T. And had you known uh, how to handle the impulse equation, you would have been able to get this bing, bang, bow uh, on uh, the, the bonus uh, question. All right, so what we're gonna do with the stopping force, the frictional force, now we're going to put in a minus sign uh, to denote leftwardness, okay, with a directional minus sign. All right. Now let me pause for questions. Okay. Let's keep going. All right. So. Uh, so let's put our stuff together here. All right, let's look at what we got. P1 is the mass, 0 0.05 kilograms for the coin, times whatever the velocity is, 1.7 meters per second rightward. Now, when you're working on homework tonight, yes, you'll have problems like this. We'll have a little homework. Not a huge one, but a little one. Since I'm still feeling generous after the exam, I didn't give you any homework over the weekend. And I'll give you a little, just a little bit tonight. But over this coming weekend, payback time. I'll give you plenty of homework. All right. So when you calculate those two together, 0 0.05 times 1.7, you get positive 0 0.085. And the unit of momentum, my wonderful students, is kilogram meter per second. There's no fancy name for it. We don't have that named after a scientist, you know, like Newton for kilogram meter per second squared. Um, and, you know, we have other units that are named after scientists, but moment, I don't know why, but momentum just, you know, it's just kilogram meters per second. Okay, and then P2 is zero because it stopped, right? Now, delta P is later minus earlier, you know, mom later momentum minus earlier momentum. The deltas are always later minus earlier. So for us, it's P2 minus P1. So let's put it together. All right, so here's my two momenta. And they're one dimensional. We're just going in one direction on the tabletop. All right, so let's put them together. So delta P is zero. That's P2 minus P1. Uh, so it's minus 0 0.085 kilogram meters per second. So the total um, is negative 0 0.085 kilogram meters per second. So the change in velocity, the change in momentum, the impulse is from this stopping force is leftward. This tells you the, the direction uh, basically of the, the stopping force. And we already knew what that was. It's the friction force. So now, Let's put that into the impulse equation, all right? So here's your impulse equation right down here. And we can put everything in there except delta T. So here's my, um, let me get my cursor over here. Here's my uh, frictional force, negative 0 0.020 newtons. And here's delta T. And, and here's my impulse, uh, my delta P, negative 0 0.85 kilogram meters per second. Now, I want you to look at this carefully. Kilogram meters per second is almost the same as a Newton unit-wise. A, unit, a Newton over here 
is kilogram meter per second squared. Delta P is just kilogram meter per second to the first power. So we're off by one power of seconds. And the reason for that is because we got this delta T up here that we haven't uh, ca calculated into the numbers. In fact, that's going to give us our delta T in seconds. Question. Uh, the force was negative because it was leftward. That's correct. The force was leftward, and so we, we give it a minus sign. All right. Another question? Okay, speak now or forever hold your peace because you're going to do a calculation like this in a few seconds with your clickers. All right. Any, anybody notice anything about the equation, the, the equation block down here, the last one? Down, negative 0 0.020 newtons times delta T equals negative 0 0.085 kilogram meter per second. Notice anything handy about that? What do you see? Raise your hand if you see something handy. Handy and nice. Looky, what do you th what do you see? Huh? There's going to be some units cancel out, and you can do that at this point, but we're going to wait on the units. And, and I kind of already mentioned that because there's the new this Newton over here is a kilogram meter per second squared, so we're going to cancel those eventually. But I don't want to do those yet. But there's something else here. Do you see it? That what do you see? The what? Why? The negatives cancel out, and you can see it here, left and right. So you're going to be left with a po positive numbers everywhere, and so delta T is going to be a positive, you know, 0 0.7 or whatever it works out to be. All right, so we're looking good. You don't want your stopping time to be negative, your delta T to be negative, because that means you're going backwards in time. I'll stop two minutes ago. That doesn't make sense. So we want that to be a positive number. So yeah, you could cancel the can the negative signs here now if you want, or you can wait till later. And I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna carry them uh, to the next page. So let's go to the next page. All right. So here's what we got. I still have the negative signs up there. You could have canceled them earlier, and it would be even simpler. Um, all right. So just to remind you, here's the impulse equation. Here are the plugins of the things that we know. And some of the things were given, like the, the force, negative 0 0.20 newtons. Uh, but some of them we had to actually calculate ourselves, like delta P over here, negative 0 0.085. So when you're looking at these problems in homework, remember to read carefully for information. All right. Also, um, if you have a problem like this in homework, it's going to change with some random, at least one random value. So it might be the mass or the stopping force or something, uh, the speeds. Uh, so read carefully for that reason as well, because, you know, the numbers that you use for your first attempt might not work, probably won't work on your second and later attempts. But I think you guys already know that. All right, so now let's clear, um, divide both sides by negative 0. 0, 020 newtons. And here, and so now here, um, what is your name here in front? Carolyn. You, you pointed out, let's cancel units, and you could have done it back there. And I'm doing it here, and notice that my 0. 0.020 newtons, I've changed it to kilogram meter per second squared. And that is so that you can see everything that cancels out. All right. The only thing that cancels that doesn't cancel out is a unit of per second down in the denominator. So that's like one over seconds in the denominator, which means it's like regular seconds in the numerator. All right. And then the 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 numbers you all know how to calculate that. All right. So your answer here is therefore going to be in seconds, and numerically it's 4.25. 
So if I was going to ask you, give me the stopping time to the nearest tenth of a second, um, you would write in 4.3. All right. And then you would hit the send button on your eye clicker. Oh, did I say eye clicker? Yes. Uh, because we're going to do some eye clicking here um, in just just a second here. So get your get your clickers, get you get your go nitro. And uh, let's let's try to think about try to think about this uh, lovely impulse equation. And what we're doing is we're I, I'm building you guys up your mental concepts so that you can understand the interesting part about the symmetry of space time, the dynamical symmetry of our four dimensional space time, All right? But let's do a, a little simple question here. I want you to read carefully. Here it is. Let me get my clicker back. Multiple choice. Okay. Light up here. That's better. So you have a Klingon bird of prey. How much delta P does the tractor beam deliver in two seconds? Now, in this problem, there's a couple things that you don't need. That, you know, you don't need all the numbers. Jot them down, I mean, because, you know, you may need them in a later problem, but not all the numbers are needed for this answer. So type in your letter, and you're in multiple choice mode, so all you have to do is click. All right, the impulse equation, F delta T equals delta MV. Okay, 30 seconds to input, in, input your question, your answer. <clears throat> 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, let's see what you guys got here. Uh oh, we got some explaining to do. Let me stop it. Here's your answer. F delta T. The tractor force, the tractor beam is 12 newtons, and delta T is 2 seconds, so 12 times 2. And that's the only one that's equal to 24. So, And it's kilogram meters per second. Now, a bunch of you voted for that, but more people voted for D. 9.0. What? Oh. You know what D, you know, what's D is, is a good answer, but not for this question. What's that the answer for? What's the Jeopardy question for uh, D, 9.0 kilogram meters per second? 
Raise your hand, Jeopardy, Daniel. Yeah, what is the momentum? Okay. So if you want to know what the momentum of the, the blob of green jello is, yeah, uh, MV, 4.5 kilograms of mass times speed, uh, 2.0 meters per second. But that's not what the tractor beam is doing. So here's another way to put it. And if you jot down, all, you basically write all this down. It's like a little uh, blurb of notes to a diagram for me to lecture about. That's the momentum that would be changed by the tractor beam. So in 12, in two seconds, it's going to have another, it's going to be changed by 24 kilogram meter per second. So it might be down to, um, to uh, down to negative 13, or it might be up to positive 33 or something else, depending on the direction of motion of the green blob of gel, which I didn't mention and the direction of the tractor beam, right? So be aware of that when you're in a question of this kind uh, where you, you know, you have a bunch of numbers and stuff, you can get righteous numbers, but they might not be the right answer for that question. All right, let's try another one. Basketball mass of 0 0.800 kilograms, speed of 22. How many seconds are required to stop it with that stopping force? You're doing good. A lot of you are getting it correct. Whoever's voting for B, you're overlooking something that's important. You're letting me catch, I'm catching you napping on something. And basically, you don't want me to catch you napping on stuff. So, think carefully about what you've answered. Okay, uh, 20 seconds starting now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, good. I see a bunch of you change your answers there with my little hint. Um, yeah, uh, on this one, it's uh, and, and we'll calculate this out. The answer is one point six. Uh, who voted for one point six? Good. All right. For those of you that didn't, and if I can see a few of you didn't, here's the here's the basic setup. Okay, you can use the impulse equation. We're after delta t. Okay, and here's the uh, initial momentum, and we want to turn that down to zero. So at, you know, so delta t. Now, uh, in this one, I'm dropping my minus signs. So. So here's basically, this is the, the impulse equation after I've canceled the minus signs because the delta P on the, on the right should be negative 17.6 because it comes to a stop. And the other one should be at negative 11 newtons because it's opposite the direction of motion. So this, is, this equation here indicates, um, you know, the, the equations and stuff after you've canceled the minus signs. All right, so now you just do your 
you know, divide both sides by 11 newtons, and we know that this comes up seconds. Um, and so 17.6 divided by 11 is uh, 1.6 newtons. All right. Now we're going to do some more clicking here in a second, but um, uh, let me just pause to uh, give you uh, some some a preview of coming attractions. Uh, probably Thursday, I'll give you a little bit of instruction uh, on how the partici participation points work. And we've had, and, I, and also, I'll try to put an update of all your participation grades since uh, Martin Luther King Day, okay, all your official participation points. Uh, and I'll do that in web courses. And then Thursday, I'll give you some instruction about it specifically how to calculate it if you're below 85% participation. Now, I expect most everybody to be above 85%, uh, or if not 100% participation. Raise your hand if you know that you're at 100%. You've participated in every... Yeah, so if you know that, if you're not one of those people that just raise your hands, it may be that you're close and you still get, uh, what is it, 25 out of 25? For participation for the semester. So Thursday I'll go over how to calculate that because it's a little tricky. It's not too bad, but it's it's not so, so straightforward as just straight percentage. All right, now I want to talk about another kind of interaction, uh, and that is uh, collisions. And we're going to use boxcars on the railroad to model that uh, simply because. Uh, it's a fairly simple one-dimensional system, and everybody's seen, you know, the railroad trains and stuff. Well, I hope everybody in here has seen it. So let's keep going. Um, here's a here's a setup. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about a set of four box cars. One of them um, initially 4.4 uh, meters per second, V1. That's the one on the left. And then the other three, V subscript G, that's the group of three, we're going to say that those guys are parked. They're at rest, 0, 0.0 meters per second. And also we're going to say that they have the same mass. Now, in reality, a real uh, railroad train, freight train, the boxcars are going to be, you know, they might be close if they're hauling the same, same amount of material, but they're not going to be exact. But we're going to idealize this a little bit. So everybody on that tr track has 35,000 kilograms of mass. So if you look at that, you can figure out MV uh, for every object in view before the uh, V1. You know, V1, or excuse me, uh, uh, boxcar one is going to smush into the uh, end of the group of three boxcars, and then they're going to mosey on off to the right at a little slower speed. And that's actually what we're going to calculate. All right, so here's here's V here's boxcar one, and it's going to have a little bit of forward velocity. The other three don't. And uh, the interaction forces uh, down there, right down there in the in the second shot in the second half of the screen, that shows that uh, the moment of impact, and when they when they contact each other, there's going to be a, a moment of interaction forces, a, a moment of interaction. Uh, but they're not external forces, all right? Because they're not external forces, F delta T is zero. So the change in the momentum is equal to zero, all right? And so if we calculate momentum before and afterwards, it'll be helpful. So let's do that, all right? Um, so let's calculate the total momentum, P subscript I, of everything. So each of the three boxcars, MV for boxcar one, MV for boxcar two, MV for boxcar three, and MV for boxcar four. Now the last three are easy. They're at rest, so MV is equal to zero for those three babies. All right, so that's, that's nice. And we know the momentum of the first one because we know it's incoming speed, 4.4 meters per second. Now when you're doing your homework, uh-oh, did I say homework? Yes. 
you're, you're going to have some problems with box cars. All right, you're going to have some. You're going to have a bunch of calculations, but not too many. I'll just give you a couple, three, and that'll be good for for between now and Thursday. But anyways, you might have uh, uh, three box cars, one moving, two at rest, or five box cars, one moving, four at rest. But it'll usually be one moving and some other number at rest, and all identical, so that things are fairly cinchy to calculate. But you know everything that we do. Uh, you can do for unequal box cars and you know even unequal box cars at different speeds. So what we want to figure out is the final state of the group. So that's V subscript new. All right, the new speed. And this is how the if, if you've ever been to the freight yards, this is how they work. You know, they take a string of box cars and they have a pusher engine that, you know, and they push it up a little hill, you know, 10, 12 feet tall. And then they and then they let the box car roll down the hill, and then at the bottom of the hill they have switches onto different tracks, and they switch it on the track of the train they're forming, and it just goes out along that track and bang it, it hooks up with the other uh, freight cars on the track. So this is a realistic uh, problem. Now afterward, uh, excuse me, beforehand the total is 154,000. Kilogram meter per second. Anybody verify me on that? Three thirty-five thousand times four point four. Raise your hand if you verify me on that calculation. Okay. Yeah. When you just bring your calculator to class every day, and we'll just do, try to verify me and stuff. And every once again, you know, every once in a while, I get caught napping because I I put a typo on or something. But I think I got all these right for today. Now. That number also has to be equal to the final momentum, all right? So the final momentum is going to be MV of boxcar 1 plus MV of boxcar 2 plus MV of boxcar 3 plus MV of boxcar 4, and then add all that together. All right, so that's going to be the final momentum. Now, let me ask you a question. In the bottom half, as they march off together, are they going to have different speeds? They are, aren't they? Because one's on the left and one's on the right. Right? So different speeds, right? Or or what, what's, what's going to happen? Think. If they're all marching off together, do they have different speeds? No, they don't. So everything's going to happen. So one thing we know is that, you know, MV1, MV2, MV3, the Vs are all going to be the same. Oh, wait. The Ms are all the same, too. You know, they're all 35,000. So all I really have to do is 35,000 35, times 4 times whatever my new V is, and that's going to be my new uh, – that's going to be my momentum afterwards. Now – Clicker question. Here we go. Why must the initial momentum state of the boxcars P subscribe equal the final momentum state of the boxcars P subscript F? Go ahead and make a choice. Actually, wait a minute. Let me terminate that question. Uh, I want to do a different. I want to do. Hold on. I hit your refresh key. Okay, hit your refresh key. Now, this one um, allows you to type in more than one answer. So type in a letter, uh, A, B, C, D, or E, and then hit the send key and because now you're in short answer. So type A, B, C, D, or E, and then hit the send key if you dare.
Who typed in seven? Don't type in two letters. Just give me one. I see a few of you typed in more than one. Just give me one letter. The one that you think is best. And then hit the send key. And don't type in good. Okay, seven is gone. Yeah, so don't give me two letters. Give me one. And you can change it. Just delete one of them or delete both and then type it in again and hit the send key. All right. Uh, 20 seconds. <coughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Uh, all right, let's see what you guys voted for. All right, it's not too bad. Correct answer. B is E. Uh, momentum is always conserved. But another correct answer. Did you choose this one? <coughs> because they exchange equal but opposite momentum. And that's because the forces that change the momenta uh, are third law forces, the interaction force. So the interaction force, so whatever the, whatever force, <coughs> excuse me, I'm coughing into the mic here. Whatever force um, uh, happens between the two cars, you know, they get jolted by a force, you know, one going, uh, off to the to the left, you know the, the box car number one is getting a jolt this way, right? So he's going to slow down a little bit, and box cars two, three, and four are getting jolted off to the right, uh, but by the same size force. So uh, option C here is also correct. All right, so remember that. All right, let's keep going. So P subscript F is 154,000 kilogram meters per second. Now, that is what we call conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum holds when there are no external forces acting. And I should say no unbalanced external forces. Because actually there are some external forces acting here. Gravity downwards and the rigidity force of the uh, railroad track upward. You know, in other words, you can't make a railroad track made of jello. Right? You've got to have some stiffness to it. And that stiffness is going to support against gravity. So we call that a conservation of momentum. And now, as I was mentioning, you know, we, you know, when we were talking about MV1, MV2, MV3, MV4 for the four boxcars afterwards, yeah, they all have the same mass. And because they're all connected together like boxcars are, the velocities are all the same. So we just have one symbol. V subscript new, and we can simplify, uh, and this is just using the definition of momentum for the four box cars and then adding them up. It's going to be 140,000 kilograms times the, the new speed. And that new speed is going to be a little bit less than 4.4. Uh, uh, All right, so let's figure that out now. Right, so it, can you see where we can get, can you see, looking at this equation now, can you see where it's possible for us to calculate V subscript nu? Can you see that? Yeah, all we got to do is just divide now. We got everything on the left side. We got everything on the right side. And so we can just, so here we go. So there's P subscript F on the left side by conservation, on the right side by definition. And just divide both sides by 14, 140,000 kilograms. And notice that kilograms cancel top and bottom, but I'm still left uh, on the numerator with meters per second, which is good because I'm trying to figure out a speed. So I better have meters per second for my leftovers that aren't canceled. And I do. So now you just calculate and you get 1.1. Um, now, let me pause for questions because you're going to do a calculation like this in just a minute.
140,000 is because um, the the right side is the sum of <coughs> excuse me MV1, MV2, MV3, MV4. The V1, V2, V3, V4, they're all the same, right? So that factors out. And the M's are all the same, so that factors out. <coughs> so you basically have, so Sean, you have 35,000 kilograms times V nu, plus 35,000 kilograms times V nu, plus 35,000 kilograms times V nu, plus one more, 35,000 kilograms times V nu. So saying that it's 140,000 kilograms times V nu is just a shorthand for that. <coughs> All right. Question. It's the sum of the masses of all the boxcars. Because it's, it's like one gigantic boxcar moving at this, you know, at this one speed. Think of it that way. All right. Now, before that, though, the initial, uh, they, you know, the boxcar one was in motion and the other three were at rest. But now they're all moving at the same speed. Another question. Okay, uh, let's go to calculation time. Hit your refresh key. And let's go to the next question. All right, same set of boxcars, but different initial speed. It's, it's blazing a little bit faster here. So uh, let me change. This is numeric. So this is going to get you... So hit your refresh key, and then and you can type in numbers and stuff. So, so and, and what I want is to the nearest 0 0.1 meters per second of speed. So it's going to be something point something. All right, so give me something. But don't write in meters per second, even though you can. I just write in something point something, and then hit the send key. Let's see how you guys do. Do they still have Cadoba over in the student union? Yeah. What's the best uh, sandwich? Do they have Chick Fil A over there? No, that's at uh, that's a John T. Washington. But what's the best one in the student union? I haven't been over there to check them out. I know they got a bunch of new ones. They, what? They have steak shake? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Thomas Brickner. That's my favorite steak and shake. I don't know. And then, of course, over by the arena, they got Roy. Uh, what's that place called? Jimmy John's. Jimmy John's. Yeah, that's pretty good, too. What's the best pizza place around campus? Domino's. Too greasy. I don't know. I hardly ever get Domino's. What about that? Isn't there one across the street? What is it called? Blaze. It's pretty good.
Einstein's pizza bagel. Ooh, that sounds good. But that's that's the whole point. Messy, messy is, is what makes it good. All right, uh, thirty seconds to get your number in. You can tell I'm ready for lunch. I'm <laughs> daydreaming about all these sandwiches and pizza and stuff. All I got back in my office is a bunch of sardines and some and some protein bars. Ten seconds to vote. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right. Uh, let me ask. Excellent. Let me look, look at your results here. Oh my good, dude. There's some. Well, let me ask you this. Did you get uh, 1.6? Raise your hand if you got 1.6. Now, I'm not good. Very good. Lovely. You guys see? You guys are learning. It's good. Um, I noticed there's two people with 0 0.16. So I don't know if you rattled off wrong or something. And then somebody here with 1.6. Uh, but most of you did good on that. So that's great. Oops. Stop that. All right, let's keep going. Now, let's talk about conservation of momentum as a concept. Here's the basic philosophy of, you know, the skateboarders give you a great example of conservation of momentum because the, the main change in their velocity state occurs because of their interaction force. So if you think of the skateboarders being um, a system, then those would be considered internal forces and the uh, momenta are conserved. So here's the, the main principle. The total momentum of a group of interacting objects remains the same in the absence of external forces. So if you have a bunch of, you know, like gravitational interaction forces, you know, like the moon and the earth, um, you know, the Earth and the satellites, all the satellites, you know, all those things, those are internal forces to the Earth-Moon system. Every satellite orbiting the Moon right now, we've got a few up there, I think, in orbit. Um, those are all internal to the Earth-Moon system. So the, the, the momentum of, of the entire system would be um, a, a conserved. It would be a constant. Uh, it remains the same. Now, most of the momentum is going to be in the Moon and the Earth, so... You know, talking about the, uh, the satellites and stuff is kind of bootless because, but uh, theoretically, yeah, they're, you know, whatever we add there, it's going to be a constant. Now, let's get back to this idea of four-dimensional space-time. I, I want to give you some insight on what I, Einstein was getting at. And we've talked about this before, uh, you know, his conviction that it was a four-dimensional universe. So three spatial dimensions. X, Y, and Z. And then the fourth dimension is the uh, temporal dimension, time. All right. And usually in physics, we, we write time as the very first dimension and then X, Y. So it goes T, comma, X, Y, Z. But now here's, here's the three spatial dimensions. So up front here is the lectern. And you can think of the X axis as going kind of up the, the aisle, and the y-axis is going, you know, left and right in front of the lectern. And then the z-axis is going towards the ceiling. Oops, let me go back to that. All right, so, and then one temporal dimension, t. And now, here's the thing that I want to introduce here. The dynamical quantities that encode interaction and potential for interaction are very similar. Momentum, which is the mass times the spatial velocity. So in other words, P equals MV. Um, and then energy. This is the fourth component of the dynamical momentum uh, that Einstein uh, developed. So for instance, his famous equation equals MC squared, that's an energy formula. 
And that would be, it, 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 that is a part of the uh, momentum, uh, four-dimensional four momentum of every uh, space-time object. So here's my three spatial dimensions. And here's a list of the three spatial momenta. P subscript X equals M times VX. P subscript Y equals M, mass of the object, times V subscript Y. And P subscript Z equals M times V subscript Z. And if you use different coordinates, you know, like latitude and longitude and stuff, um, it has a little different form, but this is a fairly easy form. You know, these are called rectangular coordinates, X, Y, and Z, and it's, it's normal. They're fairly easy to use. All right. Now, um, that's where, and so the, the fourth uh, part of the uh, four-dimensional dynamical vector is energy, and we're going to take that up probably on Thursday. So um, let's, we went really fast today, which is great. Um, let's uh, do some homework tonight, um, and uh, you're dismissed. And I'll see you on Thursday. And I'll try to get the homework up by uh, supper time or so. Hey, yeah.